Let's talk about minimal APIs inside of the Clean Architecture. Minimal APIs belong to the presentation layer of the Clean Architecture, but it's not really obvious how you should structure your application when you are using minimal APIs. So I want to offer you two solutions to organize your minimal API endpoints, and then you can decide which one of them fits your use case. We are starting out with our endpoints defined in the program file, and at this point we have one get endpoint for fetching the products, and one post endpoint for creating a new product and saving it in the database. As the project grows and we keep adding more endpoints, it's not unrealistic that we end up with a few hundred endpoints, and if we keep defining new endpoints inside of the program file, it's going to quickly make our project unmaintainable and we're going to have a lot of problems. I think it's obvious that we should not be placing our minimal API endpoints inside of the program file, so what other options do we have? Let's start with the simplest solution where we can move our endpoints outside of the program file but still keep the same functionality. The easiest approach to achieve this is to use extension methods to define our minimal API endpoints, so this is what we're going to do. Let's create a new class inside of the presentation project that is going to hold our extension methods. I'm going to call this class products module. I want the products module to contain all of the endpoints for the product entity. And let's define a new extension method inside. I'm going to make it a void method. And I'm just going to give it a nice name of add products endpoints. We want to extend the i endpoint route builder interface. So I'm going to do that by saying this i endpoint route builder and we can call it app to keep the same convention that we had inside of the program file. The idea is to take the endpoints from the program file and just move them inside of the add products endpoints definition. We have to resolve a few using statements and then after that everything is the same as if they were defined in the program file. The benefit of this approach is that we are grouping all of our endpoints by feature and in this case the products endpoints are all going to reside inside of the products module static class. If we wanted to add more product endpoints, we would know where to find them because we have grouped them all together. To register these endpoints with our application, we have to go back to the program file and call our extension method. So here we would end up calling the app add product endpoints method, and this will take care of registering our product endpoints, and then everything is going to work the same. As you keep adding more endpoints for the different resources that you're going to have in your application, you're just going to define a new extension method to group the related set of endpoints for that resource. And then you have to remember to call that extension method inside of the program file to register those endpoints. I think this is a good approach for organizing your minimal API endpoints with the clean architecture. Now all of the endpoints live inside of the presentation layer, which is what we wanted. The slight problem that I see with this approach is that you're going to have a lot of extension methods for registering the various endpoints inside of your application. So I want to show you an alternative approach where we can also extract our endpoints into the presentation layer, but they are still registered with the application correctly. The idea is to define an interface that is going to have one method. For example, I'm going to create an interface here, which I will call iModule. This interface is going to have only one method, and I'm going to call it register endpoints. We need to give it an argument of i endpoint route builder so that we can actually register our endpoints with the application. And what we do now is we're going to make our products module implement the i module interface. Of course, we can't implement an interface with a static class. And let me just rewrite this method into the register endpoints method on the i module. So now that I implemented the iModule interface, I just need to somehow call the register endpoints method, and then my endpoints will be properly configured. The simplest way to achieve this is using reflection. We're going to scan the presentation assembly and look for implementations of the iModule interface. Then we can create instances of those implementations and just call the register endpoints method on that instance. If all you need to do is just register your endpoints with the application and you don't need any advanced configuration, then this approach is perfectly fine. But if you want access to more advanced configuration options, then I'm going to introduce you to a new library. But first you're going to have to smash that like button 
and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to show me that you appreciate these videos that I'm making for you. The library that we are going to use for registering our endpoints is called Carter. So I'm going to get rid of the iModule interface and I'm going to remove this implementation here. And we're going to implement an interface coming from the Carter library, which is called iCarterModule. This interface defines only one method, which is called routes, And we can use this interface to register our minimal API endpoints. Back in the program file, we have to call a few methods to configure our minimal API. One of those methods is on the iService collection interface, and it's called addCarter. This is going to take care of registering the services that are required by Carter. And we also have to take care of registering our minimal API endpoints. So for that, we just have to call the map Carter method. What this is going to do is it's going to find all of the implementations of the iCarter module interface and just call the add endpoints method on the implementation. I mentioned that we have access to some more advanced configuration options, and I want to show you that now. Instead of implementing the iCarter module interface, we can implement the Carter module class and we have to just override the add routes method. So let me add the override keyword. So where are these configuration options that we have access to? Let's add a constructor to our products module. And if I call this and see what I have access to, you can see that I have a few methods that are coming from the Carter module class. For example, you can turn on rate limiting for the endpoints inside of the products module, or you can configure authorization on the module level by calling require authorization. This is going to define the authorized attribute for all of the endpoints inside of this module. And another interesting thing that you can do is you can define a base route for all of the endpoints inside of this module. You can do this by calling the base constructor on the Carter module class. So you just need to say what is the base path for all of the endpoints inside of this module. So if I say that the base path is product, I can omit the products route from these endpoints here and I'm going to achieve the same behavior that I had before, but my endpoints can have simplified routes. If I start the application and we take a look at the Swagger definition, you can see that the two endpoints that we configured inside of the Carter module have the proper route applied. One more thing that I want to highlight is that you can register delegates that are going to execute before or after your endpoints. The conclusion is that we can definitely use minimal APIs with the clean architecture while encapsulating our endpoints inside of the presentation layer. While you wait for the next video, take a look at these two videos that you can see on the screen right now. And until next time, stay awesome.